Welcome to Mishnah study Masechat Shavit Perek Tet Mishnah Tet. This is the last Mishnah of this Perek. Over here, we're going to speak about if someone receives fruits as a gift, right? Or he's in, he inherited some fruits, right? And there should be eat fruits. And we'll discuss over here, right? We know mentioned earlier Machloket between it be uh, between Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel, whether people are allowed to benefit from Shavit Betoba. Right? If someone gives you like, a favor, provides a favor for you, are you allowed to benefit from that, um, or are you now not? So we saw Bet Shammai says you're not allowed to. Bet Hillel says you are allowed to. The way the Chacham, the way the Rambam explains this Mishnah, uh, and it's based off the Yerushalmi over here, this Machloket that uh, Rabbi Eliezer and Chachamim are having is going to be through the prism, through the lens of Bet Shammai. And we'll explain as we go through what I mean. Someone who received perot shvi'it, he inherited them, fell to him in inheritance. It was given to him as a gift. Bileyezer says, you could go ahead and give them to, um, to people who want to eat them. right? So you're not allowed to keep them for yourself totally. right? Because it'd be the Ezer holds like Bet Shammai over here, right? Um, Hanabam says he holds like Bet Shammai, even though he was from a Talmud of Bet Hillel. It's interesting, it's different than Tosfot. Actually, Tosfot say that Rabbi Yezer was a Talmud of Bet, uh, Bet Shammai. Rabbi uh, Hanabam says, no, Rabbi Yezer was a tal- from the Talmudim of Bet Hillel, but he held according to the Shita of Bet Shammai. And this is what the, when we say that Rabbi Yezer was, was a Shamuti, right? This is what it means according to Hanabam, right? Other people explain Shamuti that he was actually, you know, put in uh, Hiram. Uh, he was a student, yeah, a student. He was a he took upon the halacha of Bet Shammai. Right? He was posek like Bet Shammai. He held like him. And what did uh, be the uh, what did Bet Shammai say? Well, so we mentioned before that you're not allowed to eat perot shviit betova. You're not allowed to eat perot shviit and hold a favor, right? So therefore. Right? If it was given to him over here, in Yerusha, or, or as a gift, so he says, you're not allowed to eat them alone. Rather, you need to eat them with others. You can eat with other people. Hamim Omrim, Hamim come and say, look, according to you, right? And you have to say this is according to, it'll be the, it'll be as a, according to your shita, we don't hold like this. But according to your shita, you're not supposed to have the person who's sitting benefit. You said you can eat it with everyone else. Why is he even allowed to eat it at all? Rather, he needs to go ahead and sell it and then give out that money and distribute. Right? You have to go ahead and sell it and distribute the money to everyone else. You're not allowed to keep anything for yourself. Right? So again, like we said, this is all and according to according to the opinion of Bet Shammai, Halakha is not like it to be in the Ezer. Now, the next topic on Mishnah, we're going to speak about, move on to something different, that is Bihalla. So, that someone eats from the dough of shvi'it, meaning he has hala, right? He made bread. Right? And he didn't separate hala from it. Someone could have thought, who could have thought, oh, it's shvi'it. The same way not obligated to separate trumot and masrot from shvi'it. So, too. So too, we don't have to separate hala because it says reshit ari sotechem. Right? It's also a type of a type of uh, you know tiruma. But we see from over here that if someone eats from right, rather what you have to go ahead and separate hala even from fruits of shavit. So you collect wheat in the field just because you don't have to give tirumot ma'asrot. You still though have to give hala. And if you don't give hala, you hayav mita. Right, this we actually uh, know from a sechet chala. Aochel meisash lo machalata hayav mita. Verse is liable of death. Right, for not separating chala. It's a very strict halacha. And over here we learn that the law of shviit applies to this also, even though the uh, the bread itself, the dough itself, is coming from hifker.